I want to keep LA investors from getting scammed. I know a lot of LA investors are getting scammed in the Cleveland real estate market, and I'm here to put an end to it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Today, very, very special show. Very special show. We're working for two guys, Andrew and Gary, L.A. investors. And you guys almost fell victim to the L.A. investor trap. The L.A. investor scam. I see the scam happen every day. There's not one particular party doing the scam. It's everybody. There's all kinds of people scamming L.A. people like you, right? You guys almost fall for it, but you didn't. You didn't fall for it. You guys are too smart for that. What did you guys do? You guys came to me because you trust but verify, right? What that scam is, is that is people blowing smoke and mirrors out there Getting people like you two dudes from L.A. to look at the Cleveland market with out-of-state eyes, right? It's like beer goggles when you're at the bar and it's 3 a.m. and you don't know where you are. You're like, hey, how are you? Anyway, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about real estate. What it is, though, is everything in Cleveland seems so cheap to you because you're in L.A., right? Everything seems so cheap. You're like, bro, this property costs what? Holy crap, we couldn't buy a mailbox in L.A. for that, right? The land around your mailbox. I don't know. That's a horrible analogy. But the moral of the story is L.A. is a lot of money, and everything in Cleveland feels like it's not a lot of money, okay? And you might start to think you could never lose money, and then you get all these scamsters and hawksters telling L.A. guys like, you, oh, this property is great. Buy it for this price. And if you do a little more research, Get an actual on-the-ground, boots-on-the-ground expert, me. I break it all down for you and go, hey, man, yeah, that property's that price, but in reality, it's only worth half of what they're trying to sell it to you. And you realize you can lose a lot of money, right? That's the L.A. scam. And I fixed the L.A. scam. And I fixed it for you guys because you guys sent me five deals last week. Five deals, all of which were garbage, garbage deals. And I saved and made you two a ton of money. And you're like, hey, great job, Jay Wise. Thank you so much. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. By the way, anybody who's watching the show, you want me to analyze your deals in the link below. Click it. Set up a free call. Book a call with my team. See how you get your own personalized videos like these two dudes, right? I'm not just here for these two dudes. I'm here for everybody from L.A. and other places in the world making sure they don't get scammed, right? So those five properties... You paid me to analyze them. I did. Made you a lot of money. We decided those aren't the properties. You said, hey, man, you got your ear to the ground in Cleveland. Can you find us something that makes sense? And yes, yes, I can, fellas. This property, I want you to switch gears a little bit, right? First of all, I got you a totally different neighborhood. And I'm going to talk about the different levels of neighborhood in, uh, like later in the show, like what I mean, like good, bad, this or that. We'll talk about all that, right? But it's different than what you're looking at. And I don't even think you need to focus so much on the Burr strategy. I think you guys are trying to work too hard. There is a lot of really good deals out there where you don't have to work that hard. And this one is it. And it's only going to take 25K out of your pocket. And it's actually a sustainable return. Let's talk about it. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. Let's pick up the property. This one is a killer deal, man. I love this one, right? Look at this thing. She might, might not look so pretty on the eyes, but once you get to know her, folks, she's got a good soul. You know what I'm saying? All right, this duplex, nice solid C-grade duplex, nice wood here, looking fresh, looking new. Third key, man. And they've gone in and done everything, and they renovated it the same way I would have renovated it, right? Fans of the show, y'all hear me talk. You go dark floors. People love them dark floors. Agreeable gray walls, white trim. That's what you do, right? 
if you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I like the color blue better, blah, blah, blah. Bro, it's not about you, okay? It's about what is popular, right? It's about neutral tones. It's about not picking out the favorite color of somebody. It's picking out a color that most people are going to be cool with, right? And statistically speaking, that's going to be this layout, right? White kitchen cabinets, all that looking good. This is a fresh unit, man. We got to do nothing here, it appears, other than pop a for rent sign in the front yard, market this bad boy on Holton Wise TV, and you will get yourself some solid tenants, man. Looks like the seller has gone in and done it all, right? Truly good looking property for us, folks. And what we're going to do, uh, we're going to be able to get a, oh, by the way, <coughs> hard to see, but you can see the mechanicals in the background, all new. Right, all newer. Look how new those all look, right? Two furnaces, two hot water tanks. It's very important that these are new, by the way, folks. Just so you know, furnaces cost about three to thirty-five hundred dollars a piece right now. So if you got to do two of them, do the math. That's seven K hot water tanks, about a G, it's like twelve hundred. Prices keep going up, right? It's twenty twenty two. Welcome to the COVID world. Welcome to Biden's inflation. Anyway, moral of the story is all this stuff that you see here that's new, you're looking at like nine thousand dollars worth of stuff, right? Hot water tanks, they last about 15 years. Furnaces last about 30, right? So they did a lot of work for you, right? This thing is in solid shape. This is an earner, man. This is probably one of the better investments on the market, right? Solid C-grade neighborhood. I like the neighborhood. 228 Gates, Illyria. Two days on the market. We're going to need to move quick, right? This will fly. It's going to have multiple offers. Now, they're asking 100, right? And we're going to get. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? For, or they're asking 110, rather. What are we going to get? Well, we're going to slap two tenants in there. Cash paying or Section 8, both work well in this neighborhood. This is a neighborhood where the neighborhood, in my opinion, is solid enough where you get a decent chunk of qualified cash paying tenants. But on top of that, love me some Section 8 because there ain't nothing better than government guaranteed cheddar. So it works well with both. Those are really the sweet spot markets, markets where you get the widest possible tenant base, right? That's how you keep your tenancy uh, vacancies down, folks, right? If you get into some neighborhoods that are so high risk, your really only choice is Section 8 because if you try to go with just cash paying tenants, you're going to deal with just way too many turnovers and evictions and not payment of rent, right? And then you get to other neighborhoods that are real nice and you don't really want to go Section 8 because you have really nice high quality tenant base, but the price to rent ratios are usually all out of whack. So this is like the C spot. If people often ask me questions like, yo, is this good? Is this good? Is that good? Is this bad? Right? Is this neighborhood good? Is this neighborhood bad? I don't I don't like those questions. I don't like the question of is this neighborhood good or is this neighborhood bad? I think that's a flawed question, right? Why is that a flawed question? Good for what? Bad for what? Right? I, it's not a thing, right? Like, all right, this particular neighborhood is good in the uh, aspect that I think this is the sweet spot for investing in long-term buy and hold real estate, right? Like if you're asking me if I think this is good for a buy and hold investor who wants that sweet spot of low prices, high price to rent ratio, wide tenant base, I think it's great. I love buying rental properties in neighborhoods like this. I happen to love Elyria quite a bit from a rental property perspective. But if you're asking me, like, do I want to live in this house? No, motherfucker, I'm rich. I don't want to live in this house. Shit. So I don't like the answer or the question of, like, good or bad, right? Because of that. Because of that. What I did is I created the ultimate guide to great in Cleveland neighborhoods, right? And I got a link to it in the show notes below. It's also available on the tools and resources section of HoltonWise.com. You can also Google it. And what I did is I graded every neighborhood on an 8F scale. A being high price low risk f being low price high risk okay so like good bad it varies based on good for what bad for what varies based upon the investor right so utilize that guide to see where your sweet spot is right you might be an investor who's like dude i want the cheapest deals possible and i only want section eight well then hey man for you you might be able to get something like this a little bit cheaper and only go Section 8 if you go to like a D or an F neighborhood. But you might be like, oh, I don't want risk. And you might want to go up to like a B neighborhood, right? So look into that. With all that said, this is like a very, very high C grade neighborhood, which in my opinion is a nice sweet spot for long-term cash flow investing, okay? So I truly do like that. And this is going to fly. But 110. I would love in a perfect world to be able to get you this property 100K. Now, here's the deal. 
I think there's going to be multiple offers. So if you really want it, don't be afraid to go above 100K. But I think 100K would be the sweet spot. It'd be nice to see you get that. But I cannot guarantee that, of course. I can't guarantee anything. But it's going to be tough because I know there's going to be a lot of people who are very excited to see it renovated, to see all those new mechanicals, right? This is what the numbers would look like uh, on an annualized basis at 100K. 1,500 comes in, 781, 25 would be your average NOI out of that, right? So of the 18K that comes in every year, an average would be just under 10K in pure profit, right? Even though the furnace is new, the hot water tanks are new, you see that I have you saving money towards capital expenditures, right? I have you saving 900 a year for that, 900 a year for vacancy, 900 a year for repairs and maintenance. Those are all $900 that go into your pocket, but I don't want you to consider them to be profit because in 15 years, I'm like, hey, dog, you need to give me a grant because we got to fix your hot water tank, things of that nature. Or eventually, a tenant will move out and those beautiful, agreeable gray walls you see right now are going to need to get repainted, stuff like that, right? Pure $9,375, though, in profit is what I anticipate. If you pay 100 you only put down 25 k Bank kicks in 75 should result in a 22.3% cash on cash return. That, folks, is a solid deal. Very hard to achieve numbers that look better than this on a property of this quality level with this age of mechanicals in a neighborhood that I consider to be high C, low B. I think this is a killer deal. Works at 100 perfectly. Yes, your returns will go down slightly if you go above that, but I think based on the competition, all the investors coming from all over the world, you may want to bid more than 100, but I can submit any offer you like. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.